Welcome to this episode of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at Image Composite Editor once again, the free software from Microsoft uh, that in the last episode I showed you how to use Spark Images to create a panoramic uh, image offline. This time we're going to be doing something a little bit different with it. We've got it queued up here, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a panorama from video this time. So not only will this work with Spark, but basically any drone out there uh, that produces video. So I've already got some video queued up, so I'm going to go ahead and load it up. And so this is actually video from over Lake Huron on the Spark. Now, there's a couple of different ways we can go about processing this video. So basically, we need to take a section of the video and define that section as being our panorama. So we can start playing through it. We can move the scrubber down here through the video as we go through the video. And then we can use the set start and set end buttons to, for example, if I click here, set start, and then I move my scrubber down here and set end. This section is where my video is going to be. It's going to take these video frames and turn it into the panorama. Now, I already have a pretty good idea of where I want to start and stop, so I'm going to go ahead and actually just enter those numbers here. And this is something you can also do, is enter start and end numbers. And this is what I'm going to do. And since it's time-based, you'll use a colon. And I'm going to do 123.0. 33 seconds and then I'm just going to hit enter. Now notice I have now have a set um, range specified time-wise in my uh, timeline here. And so I'm going to move my scrubber through here and then let's take, take a quick look at what I've defined and so you kind of get an idea. Now in short what you want to have is a yaw se sequence where you've yawed the copter around and let's take a quick look at this. I'm going to hit the play button and it's going to play play and as you can see I'm yawing the copter around uh, and it's a little bit jerky uh, which is okay because we're going to turn it into a panorama and so as we come back around we'll end at the other side of the bridge there's the bridge. Now notice I go a little bit past it then I sort of come back. So what I want to do is to kind of fine-tune this I just want to turn this back a little bit to where I first come on the bridge and you notice I'm just adjusting the slider down here a little bit and uh, I'm going to whoops I went a little bit too far. It can be a little bit jerky in processing the image and so you have to kind of just kind of play with it a little bit. That's why I kind of like fine-tuning it with the uh, actual numbers once I get this where I want it. So now I'm going back, and so I'm just going to nudge it over ever so bit and let, let it settle in. So I'm good. So uh, I'm good around this portion. Now down here, um, optionally, we can draw rectangles around the video frames that we want to appear in the final panorama. I'm just going to accept the full frame for right now. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up here to my breadcrumb list and then I'm going to uh, stitch. Now this is, could take a little bit depending on how big of a panorama and the size of your video. In my case it's, it's a 1080p video so a eh, fair size, not uh, too large. And you can see it's analyzing the video. So it'll go through three basic steps. It'll go through analyzing the video. Once it's analyzed, it'll align the images, and then it'll create the compositing images or the composite images result. So uh, I'm going to just fast forward through this part because this could take a little bit of time. Okay, now we're back. So you don't have to worry about, you might see some flickering of the image and that's basically my screen recording software. So here we have the completed image and you can see it's uh, pretty spectacular. Now one of the things I want to point out is the center. So I, I'm sitting here with the copter looking out. So this is why you see land here and land here. So this is what you're going to have. It's going to center based upon the uh, you know center of whatever's taking the video. Now we can go through various different pieces sort of like with the uh, uh, other one where we have uh, perspective orientation of um, 
stereographic or you know fisheye so we can change the perspective and move through this quite a bit but as with the uh, other one we're going to just use cylindrical and uh, if we click this icon up here it'll fit it back into the um, um, frame. Now one of the things we may want to do is now notice the lines on this. I'm going to zoom up a little bit and what I'm going to do is change perspective a little bit to uh, kind of push this into frame a little bit because see my horizon is a little bit off so I kind of want to adjust my horizon a little bit and square it up. So there we go. That's that's pretty square. I kind of like that. You can get more particular as you say. As you can see, you can push up different portions and pull down different portions to adjust it. But then I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to say fit to window, and I'm pretty happy with that. So the next piece I'm going to go is into the crop phase. Now one of the things, as in the prior video, you notice that there's gaps. And so this is the one piece that I really love is autocomplete up here. So I'm going to click autocomplete and it's going to take a minute or two, eh, maybe a little bit less than a minute to go through. And you notice we have an amazing, stunning, complete picture. Look at the size of this. So if we look at this, we have it. It's basically uh, 8,816 pixels wide by a height of 1,193 pixels. So now since this was composed from a video, it isn't as high resolution as the individual frames were from um, the Spark, but it's still a pretty amazing image in itself because as you can see as I'm zooming up into this, it still does maintain quite a bit of detail. So you could get a pretty large, say, canvas-based image of this. And again, you can move in and zoom around. I mean, you know, check these boats out. These boats are quite a ways out, probably about a mile out from where I was. And there's still pretty good definition on them, even being so far out. So now the next piece we can do is uh, we can click on export, and this is where we can save this out. So this is about, yeah, only about a 10 megapixel file. So it's not that huge. Now also notice that we can set the different um, qualities and so something like this we probably want to go superb at least 90% in, in a JPEG format if we're going to do JPEG. I, I do recommend though if you're going to save this for longer term uh, to use the TIFF format. Um, it just uh, you don't have the lossy compression that you find in a JPEG because you know over time being open closed and saved the lossy compression in the JPEG will have an effect on the image quality but uh, all in all from a video we've now taken and created a beautiful panoramic look at that sunset and especially as we begin to zoom in and do a full frame on this look look at the sun over the lake and then we can kind of scroll scroll around so you can get a you can get an idea you can do some pretty amazing photographs uh, from this and uh, you can see we have a little bit if we zoom in too much a little bit of glare that didn't carry over from here in the video but uh, again we can also bring this picture into an editing program uh, like Photoshop and, and you know clean it up a little bit more we can also work on the the pre-processing of this a little bit too but again just kind of wanted to show you guys how for free you can take a uh, video and create a pretty stunning panoramic image from it so I'm pretty impressed with this now uh, for as I mentioned that this not only works for drone videos but basically any video too so if you happen to be a real estate agent and you want to do 360 panoramas of a room or something you know you can just spin around with a cell phone and import that video in here and do pretty much the same thing so any any chance that you have where you turn around with a camera you can basically import it and achieve a panoramic image I'm going to do another future video too on taking these and uh, using them in WordPress also so you can share them with your friends, family. There's a lot of panoramic uh, plugins for WordPress I'm going to cover in a future episode so stay tuned for that. So hopefully you found this interesting, you learned a little bit of something uh, and it's free on top of it and like I say I've been very impressed with this uh, image composite editor from Microsoft which again is free. So if you like this, if you found it interesting be sure to hit the thumbs up, you know the routine there's going to be a subscribe button over on the side. Hit me up in the comments below and let me know what you're thinking about for lunch. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.